Welcome back to another episode. If you can produce an image like this, then you're almost guaranteed to get work, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right, so here we are in Lightroom, and here are my two images that we're going to use. So this is just a simple flash ambient blend. Here is the ambient image, and here is the flash image. So let's start with the ambient image. And I'm going to reset this and I'm going to show you uh, my ambient single image preset. Okay, create your own presets. If you go back and watch my one of my episodes where I talk about how to make a uh, preset, if you haven't already, just make sure that you create one. This is going to make your workflow a lot faster. And let's go to our flash image. It's right here. I'm just going to reset reset it that's what it looked like straight out of camera <clears throat> and let's click our ambient single image bump I'm gonna bump this exposure up just a little bit more so we have a lake in the background that's gonna be uh, you definitely want to be able to show that if you're shooting if you're shooting lake property the realtor is gonna want to see that exterior uh, be able to show the views for the lake that's the selling point of the house so just make note of that so we have our two layers right here our ambient layer and our flash layer. Let's command and click on that. Edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, here we go. We have our two layers. Ambient layer is on the top. Remember, we're gonna just make sure that our top layer is clicked. Come down here to the mask and then command I to invert it. Make sure our white is chosen right here. Click our brush. Flow is at five or six percent and we just start painting it back in getting rid of that ceiling fan shadow I love the ambient on the ceiling so that's the other thing to check remember when you're shooting your ambient layer to make sure you have enough light and you just start painting it back in and I like the natural shadows don't worry about this sunlight washing out the floor I'm gonna show you how to correct that we're basically just gonna paint back over again with the flash layer but I want to make sure that we got all that look at that as I was talking just like that we are pretty much done now if there wasn't a TV or a fireplace we were gonna add we would pretty much be done I'm going to flip this back to black and just kind of do a couple of clicks right here you want to be able to see the detail of that hardwood floor that's another selling point of houses is those hardwood floors now what we can do is we can flatten this image we're going to come down here to this box with a plus in it, which is just adds a layer. Now what we're going to do is just going to make this TV a little bit uh, darker. We're going to take the glare out of it. So we're going to take our pen tool and come in and zoom in. And I've shown this in other videos, but we're just going to do all four corners really quick. And there we go. Right click, fill path. And mine I know is already on black, so I hit OK. I'd like to right click and just... Uh, or is it delete path and now we can drop that opacity down to 50 let's go to 60 percent toggle that on and off look at the difference how clean that made that TV you don't want to go all black because that'll look super fake okay TV's done now let's do this fireplace you could find a image and uh, do like place in bed and put it in there I've done that before but I'm gonna show you a way to do it straight out of Photoshop if you haven't seen any of these tutorials before, this is how you do it. Add another layer. We're gonna use our pen tool again. I'm gonna come down here and wherever you want the flame to start. So don't worry about the couch here. This is a good little training tip. Don't worry about this. We can delete any of our flames around this couch area. So we wanna put the flame lengthwise in this fire. So I'm gonna start the bottom of the flame here. Click here click here just make little mountains this is simulating where we where, where we want our flames to show up kind of the pattern and let's do one more and now we come up here to filter render flame okay and that's what our flame is gonna look like you can mess around and play with all these different uh, settings length width the angle the interval all that kind of stuff even the type of flame the pattern of it I don't really like that. What's this one look like? No. I think that's why I had it set on the one I had it set on directional. Yeah. And then hit OK. 
Now, to get rid of your pen tool marks, I just like to come up here and click shape, and then take that shape icon and drag it to the garbage. Now, that looks hideous. We gotta change the blend mode and bring it down to screen. There we go. Now we're gonna come up here to go edit, transform, distort. And now we can sit here and kind of manipulate this flame where we want it, how long we want it. We can move it. All right, that looks pretty good for this tutorial. We're gonna click this off. Now we have some flame touching the couch. All we're gonna do is take our eraser tool and get that flame off the couch. You can even tidy up some of these flames here. You don't want to do it too much because it'll start to look fake on you. And of course the flame isn't going to be on the outside of the frame of the fireplace. So we can do that right there. And it looks a little too bold for my taste. So I'm just going to take that opacity down. Maybe not too much because remember it's a bright, bright room. So you don't want the flame overpowering. If we threw that opacity back up, it just looks super fake. I personally think this looks fake anyway, but it does add a nice touch and it gives the you know, potential buyer who's viewing these photos on the MLS a kind of a nice, what does it look like if the fireplace was lit type of thing. And real realtors love that. If you can do that for them, like I said, you're almost guaranteed a job. Almost every realtor asks me as we're touring the house, can you put a flame in that? And it also kind of impresses the seller too when you say that and you're talking about this with the realtor. Now, cool thing about this photo, this particular photo shoot of mine, this was actually for an architect. So not only are you gonna start getting work with realtors, but then architects who have designed in houses uh, are gonna start calling you because word of mouth will spread uh, a lot of times architects are going to ask realtors, hey, do you know any uh, real estate photographers? You know, because that's who they are looking for. Uh, and they're going to refer you if they are using you. Um, because real estate photography is different than portraiture or really any other type of photography. It's got a special niche to it that not a lot of people are, are able to do. If um, the amateurs, and I, again, there's a lot of really good HDR photographers out there. I personally don't know how to do what they do um, and I frankly I've seen some tutorials on these really complex HDR edits it's like how do you even have time to do that uh, as far as cutting out all the window views and all that stuff but that's why look at the image that we just created within I mean I was talking and demonstrating it it's a lot faster if you once you get memorized and learn these methods and learn Photoshop uh, but it really doesn't take you that long and it's super clean and look so now let's get back in here I'm going to show you how to fix that white balance issue I was talking about earlier okay so here we are to the untrained eye you would think wow that looks really nice but I can tell that there's some yellow some color casting on the ceiling you can just tell that it's got a color cast issue so let's flatten this image and I am going to show you so I have a preset but I'll walk you through this we're gonna duplicate this layer I'm gonna un unlock that okay so make sure your top layer is selected after you duplicate them come up here to filter blur and average that's gonna take an average of all the colors and now we have to do a color picker so we have to go down here to curves click the middle one and then just click in there now if you can see our graph here, it looks like it pulled out some of the reds, which is what we wanted. And now let's toggle off that first layer. And now we can toggle on and off. And if you can see that as I'm doing that, that's off and this is on. It took away some of that red hue that was uh, uh, being created by the sunlight coming into the room and that hardwood. So you got to make sure you watch that. So now that we got the color correction, we got everything else in this image, we can go ahead and flatten this image. Hit OK because we're not using that other one. Command S, bring it back into Lightroom. And here it is as a TIFF file. I'm going to do my interior final bump. And I'm actually going to bring the uh, exposure down just a little bit. Maybe darken, taking those blacks down just a little bit more. Now you can turn your blacks on and turn your highlights on. So if you think you if you don't want any blacks clipped at all, which I don't really care at, at that point, 
but there you go there's the final image thank you for watching stay tuned for those other videos make sure to hit that subscribe button and I say that cliche like because so many youtubers that's all they say is make sure to hit that subscribe button but seriously hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be releasing more and more tutorials every single listing that I go to I'm gonna find something that could be of benefit or a challenge or something that comes you know that I think you guys are gonna want to know uh, I'm going to film it and then walk you through the edit and like I said before I'm gonna go through some uh, pricing and how to price and when to raise your prices and all that good stuff so again thank you for spending time with me today tonight uh, this morning whenever you're tuning in God bless you we'll see you in the next video bye bye